But now they're making money, and they're like, wait, we want to tax. And the, the FedEx is getting a chosen to kind of be match up with the post office, and they're trying to run gimmicks. But it's a horrible example. So the, what's another example? In the healthcare website, it says, we're going to give hospitals a dollar amount to manage. And then, if they want to add a wing or buy a piece of equipment, they'll apply to us to figure out how much they need. What does this sound like? Telecommunications companies. We regulate them for years, and nothing happened. We even Republicans deregulated, and guess what we got? Cell phones. They got Blackberries, because they weren't limited on the profit they could make on a cell phone or a Blackberry. And you go back and forth with new variations, and I mean, now it's like, Somebody's going to control one thing, and everybody thinks, well, it's Microsoft, then it's Google, then it's something else, because this one, you, when you think, uh, I was uh, going over on an exchange, and one of the stocks was going to be in, uh, I think it was Norway, but Nokia was at that time taking over everything. And I was reading an article that Motorola was dead in the magazine on the plane, and the reason was Europe went to one standard on a cell phone, which gave Nokia a common standard, and Nokia, because Europe was wise and did a quasi-socialist approach, that Nokia would dominate the world and Motorola was toast. I had a Wall Street Journal that said Nokia was on its back because the Motorola came up with the clamshell phone and just about sunk Nokia. And the reason was because the free market system in the United States led to constant innovation, so a company that was on its back then put the other company on its back because you have the flexibility response. So when you look at telecommunications, their healthcare model is the failed model. Oh, well, let's try energy. There's something we've done really well. What are the problems in energy? Let's put, let's put, solar things up. In Indiana, the, my work a little today, you're not going to pile a steel mill with them or even an RV plant or uh, even a woodworking plant, but solar can do certain things at home and so on, but the sun is in areas that require it to go on a grid. But we already are billions behind on the grid. Guess why? We told the utility companies, here's your fixed rate. You can only get a rate cleared if you want to upgrade. So there's never any capital investment, there's never any innovation, and we don't even know how to get wind power and solar power on the grid because we didn't allow any capital reserve, any seed corn with which to build the grid. Every failed part of the American economy is what they're emulating in healthcare. And that this fundamental difference, it doesn't matter if it's a public option, which is quasi-government, or a non-governmental option, which if it's not acorn, which would be a sales arm, is it's Fannie and Freddie. A great model, by the way. <laughs> uh, that, uh, because Fannie and Freddie, somebody's got to bank it. Now that would be a quasi non-governmental, because they're supposedly not the federal government, they're a quasi-independent, which means they have all the disadvantages of a, a monopoly and all the disadvantages of capitalism. In other words, they can pay people whatever they want, they can make whatever rules they want, but there's no competition to hold them in check. And so you have a, the disadvantages of both. That's the non-governmental sector. Then they say that the private sector can pay 8% of their payroll costs and get this public or non-governmental option. The new variation, which I think we're going to go to, is the quote credit union model, which it isn't. It's a Fannie Mae Acorn model. That, um, and that if they do that, at the meeting that it's noon, at, at, uh, at noon with the Ocean Chamber, uh, a couple of people spoke up and said that they privately insure. It isn't 8%, it's 16 Well, I've been saying that nobody's going to choose the non-government option, the private sector. Any businessman knows. The problem here is, is that the government will keep changing the rules and therefore 8% gives you a certainty if you stay with private insurance where they have a list of things that you have to cover. So it's apples to apples and they're going to mandate what things you have to cover. And about the fifth amendment was from Yvette Clark who said um, that she added well babies and uh, well baby care uh, uh, as one of the mandates. And we opposed it and she said this is uh, because we haven't even passed the bill and they're already adding the, the change for us. And that she said, um, you guys are against well babies. If you if you deal with these uh, babies early, you can save all this money and blah blah blah. I mean, the list goes on. But, you know, my wife and I are real concerned about well baby care right now. We're more worried about like nursing home care. 
uh, and that, that there's no flexibility that we offered a member that said catastrophic plus an HSA, so we can figure out those of us who are going to get one kind of plan, and those are going to get another kind of plan. No one ever did that. One government plan. But they said at once today, their option was 16%. Now add to that that you have uncertainty in it, but that it costs you 16, and the government is saying it's going to be 8. Why? Well, private business doesn't own the money place. Uh, furthermore, an odd thing. The, the uh, government doesn't count the buildings. See, that's, we don't depreciate, we put those through, so those aren't in the cost of it. it, it that, this happened in student lending, where they now 8% chose the private lending, so they stand up private lending. Is that, well, we don't count the buildings, and well, what about the lighting? Well, we don't count the lighting, that's a different budget. What about the staff? Well, that doesn't count, that's, that goes through this appropriations budget. I mean, what exactly is in the cost? And how in the world are, is the private sector undercutting you since they have fixed and mixed and variable costs while you're putting in the variable because they're so mismanaged? Now, when you, you look at that, the public option, therefore, will become the choice. And it may take a few businesses a little bit of time to figure this out, but any kind of option that stands will be the choice. So, here's the bottom line. People say, is healthcare going to pass? Well, first step one that the town meeting calls and other things change, was it didn't pass before the August break. Um, that uh, secondly, it certainly slowed down the Senate. It had, they they need slower anyway, in case you haven't noticed. Uh, that, um, but it slowed them down even more in the House. We don't have a House bill. Now in August, the swing voters are more undecided because they can't figure out exactly what's going on, but it feels like we're spending a lot of money right now, and the government's moving fast, and they've got uncertainty, and they see other people's anger, and it shakes their confidence more, and so they're kind of watching, and that's kind of the end of the people. So we've seen the bill slow down. The president didn't want to do cap and trade. He wanted to jam the health bill through something. But the environmental faction of the party wanted to do cap and trade, so they wound up trying to do both of them and got neither. So they're both slowed down. They started at the beginning of the year, all the chamber was focused on car check. But they moved off the car check and we flipped over to cap and trade and then we flipped over to health care. And meanwhile, they're pulling the crap out of us on every little thing coming through every committee. Now when you, when you look at that, they may have to do some choosing here. They're trying to satisfy every part of the coalition at the very beginning. And in the fundamental part of the health care, I believe that the way this is going to play out is that they're going to come back and uh, this is what they tried on car check, but they got slowed down. Uh, oh, we're not going to ban the private ballot. But to say two of our prominent moderate Democrats said, oh, we've never banned the private ballot. No, they'll have a private ballot if both sides agree to private ballot. Wait a minute. Both sides? You'll never have a private ballot. Um, because the question is, can one side request a private ballot, specifically management, uh, that um, uh, not both sides, and or public arbitration. Well, that's what we want. They say we've gutted the NLRB. I didn't notice that, but that's what they accused us of. So the National Labor Relations Board, if they're doing binding arbitration, and they're already uh, pretty liberal, and they'll be taking over more, that's not really a, a workable thing. That's an effect unionization. So we were all, all focused on, on that, and then they, they uh, pivoted. Now, at some point here, they may have to say, we can't get health care, let's go back to cap and trade. We can't get cap and trade, then we need to get car check, and we need to get the, the every uh, ditch of the navigable river uh, uh, that we're going to have potential habitat now uh, in the building. Uh, they could get a cluster, but they have to deliver something for the base. They have two big problems. One is, most college students who are on the left thought we would already be welcoming all our troops home from Iraq. And instead, they're still in Iraq, and we're increasing in Afghanistan. We just had the deadliest month in Afghanistan, which is a quagmire compared to uh, Iraq. I've been chairman of narcotics efforts. I've been in uh, Afghanistan multiple times. It doesn't seem to cross their mind that, oh, you know, they don't make computers here. They're getting their money from heroin. But we wouldn't want to eradicate the heroin. We might upset somebody. Uh, and that, that it's a, a huge a challenge of how they're going to do that. So